Hello again, this is Mr. Smith once more. We're still talking about derivatives, and now we're talking about how they affect the shape of a graph. We're going to tie together all this first derivative, second derivative nonsense we've been talking about. So let's kind of move on here. I said before that a derivative can be increasing in two ways. It could look like that, or it could look like that. It could also be decreasing in two ways, like this, or like uh, this. Okay, so talking about the shape of a graph, that's kind of nasty looking. Talking about the shape of a graph, I'm going to tie the derivatives into this here. So, let's do it this. If a function is increasing like this guy is right here, well then f prime of x is positive. That's what that tells us. And it's concave up because it's a bowl opening upward. So f double prime of x is also positive. Here, the function's decreasing, but it's concave up still. So in this situation, f prime of x is negative but f double prime of x, positive. In this situation over here, it's increasing, so f prime of x is positive, but it's concave down, so f double prime is negative, and this is decreasing and concave down. So f prime of x is negative, and f double prime of x also negative. So really, those are the four situations we've got going on here with graphs. Um, the reason there's four is because the first derivative could be positive or negative, that's two. And the second derivative could be positive or negative. That's 2. And when you multiply those cases together, 2 times 2, there are four individual cases. Now, we know all the weird things with the graph that we're usually searching for happen when either the first derivative is 0 or undefined, or the second derivative is 0 or undefined. So that's usually the points we look for, because if a function's not 0 or undefined, then it's got to be positive or negative. And that's what, where these intervals fall into. So let's go ahead and make up a chart here, OK? If we know, we're going to equate everything together. f prime of x is positive, greater than 0. That means the same exact thing as f of x is increasing. So if you're asked to find where f is increasing, find where f prime is greater than 0. If you know f prime is greater than 0, then you know f is increasing. There you go. On that same hand, if f prime is less than 0, then f is decreasing. That is our first derivative relationship. That's how they work with each other. Now, knowing that f prime is positive does not tell us anything about the second derivative. And here's here's why. Knowing a function's positive, I can draw a couple functions here. Here is x squared plus 2. The function's always positive, right? But its derivative changes from negative, it's negative on this left-hand side because the slope's negative, to positive. So it doesn't matter that the function's positive. It doesn't tell us anything about its derivative. So knowing f prime is positive does not tell us anything about the second derivative. But knowing if f double prime is positive does tell us that f prime, since f double prime is really the derivative of f prime, f double prime being greater than 0 means that f prime is increasing. Well, that's the same exact relationship as this one up here. f prime greater than 0 means f is increasing. f double prime greater than 0 means f prime is increasing. And that in turn means that f of x concave up. If f double prime is negative, then f prime is decreasing. And that means f is concave down. So regardless of what you are asked to find in this situation, they all mean the same thing. If you're asked to find out where f prime is increasing, you can find out where f double prime is greater than 0. If you're told that f prime is decreasing, then you know that f is concave down, and you know that f double prime is negative. If you're told that f prime is positive, you know f is increasing. If you're told f is decreasing, you know f prime is negative. They all mean the same exact thing. If you know one, you got the other. If I said, hey guys, I have four quarters, you could say, oh great, Mr. Smith has one dollar. He just got his paycheck for the last month. He's got a dollar to spend. Woo! Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm not that rich. Um, so, we're going to do an example here and just go through how you're going to use calculus to determine the shape of a graph. I'm going to do a somewhat easy uh, example here. And then you can check out the worksheets to get some harder examples. But just to explain what's going on here while I'm working this out, we're going to use this function. This is a cubic, so you know it has to look, hopefully you know this, a cubic has to look something like that. Okay, So we know it's going to change concavity because it's going to be concave down, then concave up. And we also know it's going to be increasing, decreasing, and then increasing again. 
My question is, where is that happening? Where is this function increasing, decreasing? Where is it concave up, concave down? Where is the max and the mins? And where are the points of inflection? So that's what we're going to find here. I want to know the intervals of increasing, the intervals of decreasing. I want to know the relative maximums, the relative minimums. Let's put relative out here just so we know we're dealing with relatives. They don't have to be absolute. They could be absolute maximums and minimums, but it doesn't matter right now. And we want to know where is it concave up, where is it concave down, concave P for some reason, concave down, and where are the points of inflection? Poi. It's not just a delicious fish. Okay. There we go. Well, these things right here, increasing, decreasing, relative max, relative min, all have to do with the first derivative. So that's how I'm going to find all those guys. Concave up, concave down, point of inflection, have to do with second derivative. So in order to find all this, these first set of things I've marked off here, I'm going to find y prime. y prime is equal to 12x squared minus 24x. Now, what I want to know here is where is this zero and where is it undefined? That is my goal. Anytime my goal is to find out where something is zero or undefined, I want to factor everything as much as I can. Well, I can pull out a 12x here. That'll leave me with an x minus 2. Now, this is never undefined. It's a polynomial, so it's never undefined. But it does equal 0. And it equals 0 at 0. And it equals 0 at 2. And you know what? Might as well add one more thing in here. Usually, you're asked to find the critical numbers. So crit numbers. There we go. And we just found them. x equals 0. x equals 2. There's two critical numbers. x equals 0, x equals 2. Once you have your critical numbers, you make a number line. Thusly, you put a little y prime out here so you know this is your y prime number line. The numbers we're putting on here came from y prime, and you put on 0 and 2. Now, we know the derivative is 0 with these two points. That means in these intervals here, the derivative must be either positive or negative. That's how we're going to find increasing and decreasing. Hmm. Let's get rid of you. There we go. So all we're going to do is test these intervals. And kids ask me all the time, well, I'm going to pick a point less than 0, like negative 3. Do I plug it back into y, or do I plug it back into y prime? And before you start asking questions or freaking out, you got all these functions bouncing around, just think, do you want to know if y is negative? Is that, is that going to tell you if, if the function is decreasing or increasing? Or do you know if y prime is negative? And naturally, you want to know if y prime is negative or positive, because that tells you increasing and decreasing. That's what you want to know. So y prime we're going to test and that's that's why i have the kids write y prime out here so they know what function they're testing in so we'll pick negative three i'm going to plug it into my factored version because that makes it much easier to tell if it's positive or negative negative three and for x here is let's erase these we'll just do this out real quick negative three times 12 is negative 36 and negative three minus two is negative five i don't care what i get when i multiply it together i just care what sign it is is it positive or negative a negative times a negative is a positive since it's positive, that means my function is increasing. That's what that means. Now I'm going to plug in 1. Because that's between 0 and 2. When I plug in 1, I get 12 times negative 1. That's a negative number. That means my function is decreasing. Then I need to plug in a number bigger than 2, like 10. So 12 times 10 is 120. 10 minus 2 is 8. A positive number times a positive number is a positive number. And that means my function is increasing. So right there, I know my function is increasing on this interval here, which there's no bound, there's no lower bound, it goes down forever. So it's increasing from negative infinity up to zero. Then it's decreasing between zero and two. And notice I'm putting parentheses here because we cannot include zero and two. This is not a point, this is an interval. And we're gonna union up here because there's two places where it's increasing, negative infinity to zero and two to infinity. There we go. And you can also use inequalities for this if you really want to. Like between 0 and 2, you could say 0 less than x less than 2. It means the same exact thing. I just like interval notation better. It's less writing. I'm lazy. So now, now that we know where it's increasing and decreasing, we use the first derivative test to determine where the max and mins are. Well, here we have a point at 0. The derivative is going from positive to negative. The function is going from increasing to decreasing. Up, then down. There must be a maximum there. At 2, it's going from decreasing to increasing. There must be a minimum there. So we know there's a maximum when x is 0. 
comma. But what's the y value? Now, you do have to be careful here. You don't want to plug 0 back into your derivative. I'm not looking for the value of the derivative at 0. I'm looking for the value of the function at 0. I want a y value. I want a point on my graph where x is 0. So you plug 0 back into your original function now because you want the y value. So keep that straight. Plugging a value into y gives you the actual y value. It gives you the position that the graph is at. If you plug a, fun a value into the derivative, it tells you the slope. Well, we already know the slope is 0 at 0. That's how we found 0. We found the critical number. But when you plug 0 into your original curve, you get 0 back. So at 0, 0, there is a maximum. And this is really nasty too. Decreasing from 0 to 2 looks just like a point. It's not a point. It's an interval. you got to keep that straight. The relative max, 0, 0, is a point. The relative minimum is going to happen when x is 2. 2 comma, and to find out what y value it is, I'm going to plug 2 back into here. 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32 minus, right, 8 times 4, yeah, 32, minus, this is 48, 32 minus 48, negative 16. Beautiful. We found all that stuff just by doing the first derivative. There we go. And now I'm going to erase this, but you're going to have more room on your paper, hopefully, so you can just keep on going. Keep on trucking. Oh, man. Come on. Get out of here. X. Aha. Now, we want to find the second derivative to talk about the concavity. Concave up, concave down. Uh, points of inflection. But essentially, it's the same exact work. I keep doing this. Same exact work. Where's the second derivative, positive and negative? That's going to give us concave up, concave down. We just did that for the first derivative, but it meant increasing and decreasing. So let's go ahead and find, I just erased my first derivative. Let's go ahead and find that second derivative. 12x squared minus 24x. Y double prime is going to be 24x minus 24. No problem. So we're going to get um, changing sign at what? x equals 1? x equals 1. Am I messing up? I feel like something bad is happening here. 4x cubed, 12x squared. OK, that all looks good. Yeah, now we're good. OK x equals 1. I'm sorry. I'm just checking on my work here. I wanted to make sure I wasn't making big mistakes. So x equals 1 is the only point where the second derivative is 0. I guess we should say that. Because you're looking for the same kind of thing. Where is the second derivative 0? Where is the second derivative undefined? Well, only at 1 is it 0, and it's never undefined. And we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to make a number line, and we're going to put that value on here. So even though x equals 1 is not a critical number of this function, it's very similar to a critical number. We just got it from the second derivative. That's why they don't call it a critical number. So when you make this number line, though, put y double prime next to it so you know this number line came from y double prime. So when we're testing these intervals, we're not going to plug into y prime because we don't care about that anymore. We don't care about increasing and decreasing. We already found that. That's what y prime would tell us. We're not going to plug into y because that's just going to give us the y value. We don't care about that either. We care about concavity. That's what we're trying to find here. So we're going to test points in the second derivative, and that's going to tell if it's a concave, if it's concave up or concave down. So I'm plug zero in. Zero is my test point because it's less than one. When I plug in zero, I get negative 24. So negative. Since it's negative, that means the function is concave down. So again, very important. Keep track of what function you are working with. It's very easy to get sloppy here. The fact that this is the second derivative means this is concave down. If it had been the first derivative, this negative would mean decreasing. So be careful. When x is bigger than 1, like 100, you plug in 100, you get some gigantic big number. Awesome. That's positive. That means concave down. So it's concave. Oh, no, 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 no. That means concave up. Bam. So it's concave up on this interval from 1 all the way up, and it never stops. It just keeps on going from 1 to infinity. It's concave down when, everything, when x is less than 1. So that is from negative infinity to 1. And there's a point of inflection where the concavity changes. That happens at 1. Now, when we do mins and maxes, the first derivative changing from negative to positive is something different than the first derivative changing from positive to negative. But in terms of the second derivative, it doesn't matter if it's changing negative to positive or positive to negative. We just call that a point of inflection. So there's the point of inflection at 1. And to get the y value, because we want to know what the point is, we we're going to take 1 here, and we'll plug it in. 4 times 1 is 4, minus 12 times 1, negative 8. There you go. 